Part one, step one. Put about 40 mils of cold water into each of two large test tubes. We'll know how much by mass. Step two, you'll need to know the, the mass of the test tube plus lid for each of two containers. I recommend that you rest them on their lid on the balance and that you label them trial one, trial two. Step three, now you're gonna put half of the metal in the first test tube and the other half in the second test tube. If you don't divide them exactly in half, it's totally fine. We'll know how much is in each test tube by its mass. For part two and for part three, you're gonna need water and metal to have time to come to thermal equilibrium with the boiling water bath, which means it is super important for both parts that you leave those test tubes in there at least 10 minutes with the water boiling so the heat can get to the water inside the test tube or the metal inside the test tube. But keep in mind that as you're heating water, it will form gas. And so the lids, especially for the water containing test tubes, need to be loose so that gas can escape so that you don't have a pressure buildup. So you want the caps on there loosely for at least 10 minutes in boiling water. Part two, get the mass of two styrofoam cups and the cardboard lid. That is the empty calorimeter. Add 40 mils of room temperature water, reweigh, measure the temperature of the water. Carefully tighten down one of the water caps if you can, and then protecting your hand, you're gonna pull up that hot water and then, it's hard to do with one hand, remove the cap and then add it as quickly as you can but safely to the calorimeter containing the cold water. And now I am going to carefully swirl it until I reach a resting temperature. I see that it's going up 51.2, 51.8. When the temperature stops changing, I'm going to call that my final temperature. The assumption that we will be making is that the temperature of the boiling water bath is equal to the temperature of the water in part two and the metal in part three. If the temperature isn't 100 degrees Celsius, it's because the thermometer isn't calibrated properly. It looks like it's holding at 53.9. So I've emptied out the calorimeter and dried it. And now I'm getting my mass of calorimeter, which is oops, two styrofoam cups with a lid. And strangely, it's not the same number I just had. Same system, but now it's 12.58 grams. So when I record my initial uh, mass of empty styrofoam cups with lid, it's gonna be different. Isn't that weird? After adding 100 mils of water, remass the calorimeter with lid to know how many grams of water you have added. So I'm carefully adding, without splashing, trial one to my calorimeter. And then I will replace the lid. Put my thermometer in. Without poking through the calorimeter. And again, I'm just going to try to do with one hand, but I'm just going to swirl and trust that uh, heat is being transferred. The hot metal in an exothermic process is dumping heat to the cold water. As I did last time, I'm just looking for whatever the highest temperature is. I know the water, I got the temperature of the water before I started. I added the hot metal. Heat is being transferred. It's not going to get as high as when I added hot water for two reasons. One is I had equal amounts of hot and cold water last time. And the second thing is um, he, metal doesn't have the same great heat capacity, so it doesn't have as much heat stored even at 98.9 degrees Celsius to deliver. Be sure to do two trials for part two and for part three and join me in Zoom, I'll go over calculations.